Hi, I'm your host, Michael Anthony Giudicissi, and this is One Day Only. Old West legends return from the grave. Questions will be answered. Truth will be revealed. In one final interview, and for one day only. Welcome to One Day Only, where we bring Old West legends back to life for one final interview and for one day only. We're here at Tumbleweed Ranch in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, and I'm actually not sure who we're here to find. Maybe I am. Johnny Ringo. I got the bulge on you, mister, and I dropped that pig sticker. How do you know my name? Is this you? Johnny Ringo? I am John Ringo. You look like a blue belly in them fancy duds. What's this about? I brought you back here for one day. You see where you are? Yeah, where is this place? It doesn't matter where it is. It matters when it is. The year is 2018. We have very little time. But I've got a lot of questions for you about your past. And you've got one day to set it all straight. What did you say that year was? 2018. I'm not on. Can we go inside and talk? Yeah, that's fine. We don't have very much time. And I've got a lot of questions to ask you. You okay? Yeah, I'm a little dry. You got some corn juice or something? You mind if I have one? Two. I insist. Uh -huh. It's been a while since I had a gun pointed at the back of my head, so... <sighs> oh my goodness. So tell me, what's this about? I have the ability for one day to bring back legends, outlaws, lawmen from the Old West to ask some questions and clear up the historical record. And today, we brought you back here. Would you mind answering some questions for me, Mr. Ringo? Depends on what you got to ask. Are you with Judge Spicer's office? No. I'm not in the law. You don't have to worry about me. And even if I was, you ain't going to be around long enough to suffer any punishment. I was born John Peters Ringo. You hear that sound? I do. What is that? That's called an airplane. I don't know if we can see it from here, but that's a giant metal thing that flies in the sky and carries people at hundreds of miles an hour across the country. That one's probably headed for Phoenix, Arizona. You ever been there? Never been to Phoenix. Don't even think I've heard of Phoenix. Oh, yeah. You don't need to worry about that. You came uh, cross country, headed out west with your family as a young boy. I did. And your dad is, he died. He Something did. bad happened there. He did. I was 14 years old, changed my life forever. We were going through Wyoming territory, and Pa always insisted that he kept the shotgun cocked because there's a lot of hostiles in that area. We stopped and 
taking a rest, resting the horses. I remember I was sitting behind him and he stepped out of the wagon and the shotgun fell over and it went off. Entered the left side of his head and I saw inside his head. 14 years old, you can imagine what kind of trauma I suffered and I started drinking at almost 15 because of it. Changed my life forever. How do you know about that? I know a lot about you from books, from historical records, and from something we'll talk to you a little later about called movies. Would it surprise you to know that a number of actors have portrayed you in your life? I mean, what is a, a movie? We'll get to that, don't worry. Did you ever hear of something called Wikipedia? Probably uh, not. Uh, you're talking some hogwash, Mr. You know, I'm getting tired of your hog jawing here. Let's get to what we're you, supposed to do. You, you killed your first man during the Mason County War? I did. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, well, I was living. James? Jim Chaney. Chaney? Jim Chaney was his name. And there's those that say that I shot him in the back while he was washing his hands. While he was washing his hands, he had a derringer in his pocket, and I saw it. And I got the bulge on him, and I took care of him before he even got that derringer out. I don't care what your wiki, whatever you said, says. That's the way it happened. Is that So shoot first, figure out who they are later? Is that what happened with Charlie Bader? Well, you know, Charlie... You know, he just walked into a bad situation. He got the bulge on me, but I was able to get off his shop before him. You know, as a kid, I got real good with these guns. I could drive a nail at 50 feet. That's what I did with old Charlie. I put one right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does it feel to kill a man? I've never killed one. Yet. Don't matter one way or the other. It's either me or him. and I don't even think twice about it. You made your way to Arizona. Tombstone. Thoroughly you remember that. You might be surprised at how many people nowadays take their time and spend all their energy researching every single little thing that happened in Tombstone with you and the Cochise County Cowboys. You were friends with Curly Bill. I was friends with Curly Bill. But still you felt like you should be the one in charge and given the, the respect for that? I don't think I got the respect from people in town. Curly Bill gave me that respect. I think he was more fearful of me because I, I put pulled a gun on Curly several times. Did you? I did. For what reason? Cheating me in cards. Drinking. We spent most of our time drinking. I can tell that. Would you like another? I would. How could you tell a cowboy from somebody else? Well, back then we wore red sashes and you could... You could identify any man wearing a red sash as a cowboy, and no one questioned him. And I don't appreciate you questioning that red sash either. I was just wanting to verify that that's the sash that you would have worn. That is the sash I wore. And I continue to wear. Mm -hmm. You uh, ran into some uh, adversaries down in Tombstone in the name of uh, the Earp Brothers and uh, the guy that... Uh, might be called an old acquaintance of yours. Those were outlaws with a badge. That's all they were, were outlaws with a badge. They did everything we did, but they wore a badge, so they figured they could get away with it. And I resented them for that. How about uh, Doc Holliday? Yeah, Doc goes around town spewing his lies, and I didn't appreciate that either. And I called him out, and he backed down. Really? I did. I got tired of him and Wyatt Earp calling me out for robbing a stage that I wasn't even anywhere near. I called him out in the street one day. We were drinking, and Wyatt and him showed up, and neither one of them would draw on me. You know, mister, I'm getting really tired of this hog John and, and accusing. I'm, I'm giving you the chance on camera and on record. And I'm telling it. you the way it happened. Okay. And that's the way it happened. Fair enough. My apologies. Didn't, didn't mean to insult you. I could outgun Holiday on any day. He walked around sick and drunk all the time anyways. Even on my drunkest day, I could still drive a nail at 30 feet. I, I wasn't scared of Holiday. When you said you threw the sash on the floor, how close were you to each other? We were less than you and I to each other. Really? And neither of you hit each other? No, there's two holes right in the floor on Birdcage today. 
two of the best gunfighters in the West. Couldn't hit anything but the floor. We'd been drinking at the time. Here's the that's, drinking. That's the best I recall. Go there. Did you have a problem with all of the herbs, or was it really more just I with did. holiday? Any, anybody who had the name of herb was not a friend of mine. But what what did they? What else did they do to you? They did what we did in town, right. but they got away with it because they had a badge. Murdering. Murdering with a badge. Who did they murder? That makes them worse than an outlaw. Your little books tell you that Herb shot down Stillwell, Tucson, at the train depot. He was shot full of holes he wasn't even recognized. Stillwell was a friend of mine. Well, there were a few events that led up to that, weren't there? Maybe we should talk about those? Sure. There was a fight uh, near the OK Corral outside of, was it C.S. Flies? There was. You weren't there that day. I was not. I was in California visiting my sisters. Hmm. Do you wish you'd been there? Do you I think wish I'd been there. If I'd have been there, things wouldn't have been the way they turned out. Billy, Billy Clanton and, and Frank and Tom would have been alive today if I'd have been there. You uh, knew Johnny Behan. I did. Very good friend of mine. The the record tells us that when the Earps were approaching your friends, the Cowboys, Behan went up and said, I've disarmed them, it's okay. And they continued. They continued because they wanted to murder my friends, but those some, Cowboys. But the cow, some of the Cowboys were armed. Not to my recollection what I read. They were disarmed. Those Earp boys came into town, came into a CS Fly alleyway, they went directly to kill them, even though they knew they had been disarmed well, by Johnny Bean. I think Morgan and Virgil were wounded. What did they get shot by? Well, they, air? well there were guns. I'm not sure but what you're saying. Knowing that they went there and that they were disarmed and they continued, they wanted to kill those cowboys. Well, in our faction, when we're in town... We're not going to be disarmed. There's a lot of people that didn't like the Cowboys at that time. And there were a lot of people that did. We did a lot of good things for the community. So let's go back to that day because I'm getting some conflicting messages from you. And I want to make sure that we're absolutely clear. You said that Behan had disarmed your friends, the Cowboys. And then you said there were guns there. And clearly two of the Earps were shot. So were they disarmed? Weren't they disarmed? Did the guns appear at I wasn't magically? there, but are you calling me a liar? I'm not calling you anything. I want to understand. I want to know why Behan would have lied to the Earps and said he disarmed your friends when he, in fact, hadn't done that. What would be his purpose in doing that? Well, I'm sure Behan wanted to avoid Earps coming down and killing my friends. Maybe he should have gone with them then. Yeah. Again, if I would have been there... Things would have turned out different. We probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Maybe not. I knew they wouldn't be found guilty. That's why I went out on the posse. I wanted to kill them. Well, that's uh, interesting that you said that because you did kill one of the herbs, didn't you? Morgan? No, no I wasn't anywhere near Morgan when he was killed. Mm -hmm. I stick to that story today. I told that same story back then, and I'll tell it again today. I wasn't anywhere near the Earps when they got killed. So who killed Morgan? I don't know who killed Morgan. It was raining. It was nighttime. I have no idea who killed him. Where were you when he was killed? I was in, over at the Oriental, and I was drinking, playing cards and gambling. I heard about it. Don't know what happened. You hated the Earps so much, talked about them being murderers with badges. Well, put it this way, I, I probably know who did it, but I don't think I'm going to say who did it. I can assure you it wasn't me. Virgil Earp was also ambushed, shot in his arm. It was. You were also part of that group, weren't you? No, again, I was back in the saloon and drinking and gambling. It's what I did pretty much in the evenings. Do you know who wounded Virgil? I do. Would you like to share that? No, probably not. I, I, uh, you do realize where we are. I do. And, uh, you know, I don't need the law on me. And I don't need any papers on me. Here. Do you know where you came from? Well, last thing I remember, I was headed toward the Dragoons. I was around Turkey Creek and... 
I've been drinking and yeah, I pretty much remember where I was, some oak trees and it's the last thing I remember there. I mean there's a few more details I remember, but Well we'll get to that. But do you understand how you got here today? I have no idea how I got here. You Johnny. still haven't told me why I'm here and how I'm here. Johnny, you were killed by your hand or somebody else's 140 years ago. We brought you back from the grave to answer these important questions so that people could stop debating, stop fighting, stop arguing. And I'm giving you the chance to clear these things up and you're not taking that opportunity. When we're done, rest assured, you are going back to whence you came. And not your gun, or your cowboys, or your sash is going to save you from that end. So if I were you, I'd think twice about taking better advantage of this chance. You killed Morgan Earp, didn't you? It was still there. Uh, you were there. I was there. Did you shoot? I might have shot around, but I didn't hit him. I'd been drinking. You didn't hit him? No, I you could drive a nail from 50 feet, is that what you said? 30 feet. 30 feet? And you couldn't hit him? I'd been drinking. It was nighttime. It was pretty much still well. How about another shot of that corn juice there? And Virgil, you were there too when he was wounded, weren't you? I witnessed that. Did you witness it from behind your gun? I didn't carry a scatter gun at that time, and that's what shot him was a scatter gun. Hmm. But if I'd have had the opportunity, I would have shot him. How come nobody uh, shot and killed Wyatt or went after both of his brothers? Why not just take him out, too? No, we tried. And what happened? Well, Stillwell was a very good shot, put it that way. It had lodged in the wall right above his head. <laughs> he was in the same room with Morgan. Ten minutes ago, you told me you weren't even there, and now you know a lot more details. I'm glad you're coming around, warming up to me, so to speak. Wyatt wanted to exact some revenge on the Cowboys. And he did, didn't he? He did. He killed your friend, Curly Bill. He killed Curly Bill. Were you there at that point? I wasn't there. Do you know what happened? I'd heard he ambushed him. You know, he's a back shooter. Wouldn't have faced him right on. Curly would have got the drop on him. Yeah. That's why I got on the posse. Mm -hmm. I told you, I, there was not going to be an arrest made. No papers. I was going to kill Wyatt. Uh, some point in the near future, in a setting something like this, I'm going to be bringing Wyatt Earp back to talk to me for a day. Now, you won't be able to be there. But I'd be happy to pass along a message if you have one. You tell Wyatt he's lucky he didn't face John Ringo. Holiday was scared of me. I don't I don't care what you say. You weren't there. I faced him off in the street, he wouldn't draw on me. Okay. I called him out. Let's talk about all, uh, all Holiday was was a skinny longer. Okay. Was no he? one says that Holiday wasn't scared of me. Holiday was scared of me. I shot him. He lived, and I had papers on me. Okay. And I was able to get my way out of that as well. Was he armed? He wasn't armed. So you pistol whipped and shot a man because he wanted a beer rather than whiskey? He said Holiday wasn't scared of me, just like you're saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell you is I don't take kindly to what you're saying. Just, I think you realize that you died. You've been gone a long time. There's been a lot of rumor, speculation, innuendo about how you died, who killed you, what happened in the events leading up to your death. Do you care to set the record straight? I would, would you would. like me to yeah. spell out the yeah. various things? I'd like theories? to hear what you say supposedly happened to me. I know what happened to me. Hmm. I was there. Most people think you killed yourself. That you've been talking about committing suicide for weeks and months ahead of time. I never said anything of the such. Folks around Tombstone say that you say that you did, and they were expecting it any day. 
I'm remember. sure most of those folks in Tombstone wish I was dead. Yeah. Variously, there have been four other people associated with potentially ending your life. Wyatt Earp. Nah, I never even came across Wyatt Earp. Doc Holliday. I wish the Lunger would have faced me. Michael O'Rourke. Yeah, Johnny Behind the Deuce. Say I know him. And never come across Johnny Behind the Deuce that day. And if it wasn't you and it wasn't them, there's only one guy left that could possibly have done it. That was Buckskin Frank Leslie. Yep. Frank along with Billy Claiborne. I remember beating Buckskin real bad. He had nothing left to gamble. He got to the point where he was so desperate to get his money back, he put up his watch, his horse, his boots. He even put his boots up hmm. against my money. So we were headed to Turkey Creek. And... Uh, I started off by myself. I was going to meet up with them around Turkey Creek. Uh, the plan was to, to meet up in a day or two at a spring we had there where there was water for the horses. And I remember going out. I had two bottles of whiskey, and it was July 13th. So anyways, uh, I come across the uh, spring. Is there a day early? And I got... I got jumped by Claiborne and Buckskin. They got the drop on me. I was... Uh, Your friends. My friends. I was pretty drunk at the time. They were still really mad about the gambling that occurred the night before. And uh, Buckskin said that he was pretty humiliated and wanted to humiliate me. They wanted to hang me. and had no rope, so he used pieces of my coat to bind my hands and feet. And uh, I remember sitting there... Against the tree, there was a tree growing up that had, you know, some roots and like three trunks out of it and had like a stone, almost like a perfect bench. So I was sitting there and I was bound and we were talking and when they got the drop on me, my, my holster and gun belt was over the horn of my saddle. So I figured we were going to talk. Next thing I know, I've got a sharp pain in my left side, right there in the left side of the temple. And that's all I remember. And then I come here, and you're here asking me these questions. Between the time you felt that sharp pain here, and the time you almost made me feel a sharp pain here, do you remember anything? I don't. I just remember, I remember Claiborne and, and Buckskin was the last thing I remember, seeing their face and seeing that shot. I remember being bound up and Claiborne sitting on the ground next to me. Any bright light or angels singing? Or? Just went black. That's all I can tell you. And then I show up here. And your pistol in your hand, by your side, with one spent round. Hmm. Don't recall any of that. He ask, actually asked Billy Claiborne, because Billy Claiborne was there. Billy Claiborne's long since dead, but... And who shot Claiborne? Buckskin Frank Leslie. The uh, gentleman that found you said there was part of your scalp missing, as if it had been cut off by an, with a knife. Yeah, Buckskin carried a knife. A big knife. You think that he took that as some sort of I would trophy? I would imagine if you were there the night before, two nights before when we were gambling... You were to see the look on his face when I beat him and took everything he had. I even took his boots. I wouldn't put it past old Frank. I found a little, uh, little known piece of information that said that you had relations with Maddie Blaylock, Wyatt's wife. I did. While they were married. Maddie was just a two-bit whore anyways. And it didn't matter who she liked or who she wanted. Wyatt was around. She was Wyatt's man. When Wyatt was out of town, she slept around. She... I spent many a nights in Wyatt's bed. Oh, my goodness. Well, that is a news flash for sure. How would you like people to remember Johnny Ringo? I just want people to know that 
Johnny Ringo was was fast with a gun, took no lip from anybody, wasn't scared of any man. Your reputation is important to you, isn't it? It is at this point. Knowing where I'm at and what people think of Johnny Ringo, thinking I killed myself, I want people to know that he wasn't scared of anybody. He'd face anybody and was good with a pistol. Well, then let that be the final record. You ought to finish up your drink because it's about time you, you have to go. Enjoy. Johnny, it's time to go. Come on. Come on, Johnny. Let's go. You gotta go back from where you came. I'm again. I ain't going anywhere, mister. I don't think you realize you don't have a choice. You're awfully brave, mister, for a man that don't go here. Well, as it happens, I do. My fight's not with me. It might not be with me, but you can't stay here. The last man that stood toe to toe with me died of lead poison, mister. If I was you, I'd back off. Say when. Bye, Johnny. Thank you.